Hi everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. This is Floss Tube number 44. Today is Wednesday, August um, 7th? August 7th. And um, I have quite a few things to show you. It's been a little while since I've been here and I've been working on a few things and I finished a few things. And, um, yeah, let's just like, let's just get into it. Like, let me show you my big finish. Well, actually, I think I showed you that it was finished, but I fully finished it. I think last video I showed you that I had finished the stitching, but now I've actually like framed it. So I'm talking about Clouds Factory, Fabulous Women in History. It was a 2017 stitch along and... I finally finished it and I did make several substitutions um, clouds factory actually released I want to say like eight at least eight um, substitute women and I, I bought a few of those and used them but I also um, designed two I think two I'm looking down I think it was just two um, that I designed on my own or tweaked um, from her design and like tweaked it to make it my own. So um, I actually got this framed. Well, I framed it. So here's the exciting thing. This is by no means a standard size um, piece. I found a frame at the thrift store that fits, I think, pretty much perfectly. Um, I had written down the dimensions of this piece and I went into the thrift store and I saw this one and I almost like kept walking like oh no no that's not it and then I was I looked again and I was like hmm, let me get out my measuring tape I actually brought measuring tape with me um, and I measured it and I was like you you have to be kidding me like seriously it fits perfectly so I do want to fix one little thing before I like like the back right now is loosely pinned in I need to pull up I noticed um this is not straight I need to like tighten um right here like this needs to come up just a smidge I know you guys probably would have never noticed but it just it's a just needs to come up a smidge um this was my first time doing the lacing method and it worked awesome but where I went wrong was I didn't lace far enough over I only laced to like here I didn't go all the way and that's why that isn't quite straight so I just need to fix that and then I'm gonna like actually have this I hope you guys can hear me this is a very thick heavy frame I hope you can hear me like when I'm holding it up um Anyway, so then I'm going to like, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fully, like fully secure, like fully, 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 um, tack down the back and hang this up. I'm not, uh, I'm not like a hundred percent sold on the color. Like this is the color of the frame. I didn't change anything. I, I really like the frame a lot. I like the texture. I think the color's fine but I could paint it. It's kind of like an antiqued gold. I think it works. I mean, I think I'll keep it as is, but if any of you out there are like, girl, that frame needs to be like dark blue or, you know, something like that, then let me know. Like if you think I should change it, but I'll probably keep it how it is. I think it's fine. But if you think it would really like look extra amazing in a different color, let me know. I want to let y'all get one last look at that. All right. This is my biggest finish ever. Like in terms of size and stitching, probably. Um, the stitching wasn't, I mean, it's a lot of stitching, but as you can see, it's little characters with lots of space. It's not full coverage. So, you know, the stitching was no, like, 
walk in the park, but it wasn't like super duper labor intensive. But it's still the biggest piece I've ever finished. And how awesome that I found a frame that fit it perfectly. I mean, I think the frame was, I don't even remember, but like the most expensive like that they get is like $7.99 at that store. But they do this thing like every Saturday where, um, so they have five colors of price tags and every Saturday four of the five are on half off. And then, you know, whatever comes in that week, they tag it pink. And so that Saturday, none of the pink is on sale because that's the new stuff. But then the next week, they tag all the new stuff orange. And then that week, none of the orange is on sale and so on. So anyway, um, the most I paid is eight bucks. But I bet I, I think I got it half off. So I don't even think I paid that. So how awesome is that? Really? Um, I have quite a lot of haul. Um, very, like, very varied haul I have. Um, I'm not really sure where to start, so I'm just gonna kind of, uh, I just kind of have been piling it. It's in no real order, and I'm just gonna kind of go through, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, just kind of grab it and see what I got. Um, first, I have some non-stitching haul I want to show you. Kyle said I had to show you guys this. Um, Kyle Reckemeyer, Stitching and Sound, if you're not watching him, go watch him. Unless you just really, really cannot um, deal with um, a few F-bombs here and there, then maybe don't watch Kyle. But um, I love Kyle. He's one of my favorites. I, um, little known fact, I curse like a sail sailor. <laughs> sailor. I don't know where I was going with that. I curse like a sailor in real life. Um, I have a very, very, very filthy mouth, but on my floss tubes, I try not to, um, but I have no problem with those of you who do. Like, I'm here for it. Um, I don't know why, I don't know why I don't do it in my floss tube, but I just don't, so whatever. Um, where am I going with that? I don't know. But anyway, Kyle's awesome. And Kyle was on Instagram and he posted that he had found this mug at Target. And I was like, yeah, I need that. I'm actually going to Target in an hour. Like, you know, just for like toilet paper and stuff. And I was like, I'm looking for that mug when, I, when I'm there. And he was like, yeah, that would be great. Um, just to warn you, it's a really, really big mug. And I was like, and? <laughs> like, the bigger, the better. I love big coffee mugs. So, um, I got this mug. He's right. It's pretty big. Uh, <laughs> it says, as I suspected, I was right all along. And it actually says that on both sides. And it's a good size mug. Like, um, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, like for scale, like it's, it's a good size mug, but it's not like outrageous, but it's, it's a good size. Um, this is perfect for me though. They actually had some mugs there that were like ridiculously big, like gag gift mugs. I'm pretty sure they were half a gallon. They were um, like this much taller and like wider, like outrageously hilarious mugs that I don't think anyone would actually drink out of. Um, but they had those with this. So I was laughing because Kyle's like, it's a really, really big mug. And I'm like, well, not compared to these other ones over here. So anyway, there's my mug. Kyle said I had to show it on my floss tube. So there it is. So now I can take it to work. It's all my coworkers. You know, we can be a little, just so I can like be a little snarky at work. Um, and then I have one other thing that's not stitchy related that I'll show you guys because why not? I was at Michael's getting some DMC because um, y'all, the new Stiatch um, it starts soon. I think it starts next week. Um, the new Stiatch calls for like 900 colors of DMC. Like, I don't, I don't know. You know, you got to trust the process. Like, you don't know what the heck you're stitching. You just don't. Um, you got to just, you got to just go with it. Just go with it. Like, odds are you're going to be okay with it. You're probably not going to hate it. If you do hate it, like, you know, like, eh, whatever. So anyway, Stiatch, I, I don't want to 
I, I really don't feel like explaining it at all. I've explained it before. Um, if you want to know about it, Google it. S-T-E-O-T-C-H. Okay, just go check it out. Um, anyway, while I'm at Michael's, getting my DMC, I walk down. You know, I always like to like see um, like the decorations for the season, the seasonal decor to see if um, there's something I can Priscillify, you know, something that will strike inspiration. And I'm, you know, it's all like summer stuff is like on clearance. And I'm like, what, what what's new? They were putting Halloween stuff out. Oh, Halloween. Fall and Halloween, that is my happy time. Um, they were putting Halloween stuff out and they have some good stuff this year. Like I usually end up buying a couple things. Um, you know, they're 50% off, whatever, but, um, they had some good stuff, but it wasn't on sale yet because it's so early. Um, so it wasn't even like 40% off yet. So I used, so I, I, I found one thing and used my coupon and, uh, but I need to go back cause there was a couple other things I need. So as soon as that stuff is like 40%, 50% off, I, I got to get some stuff. Um, but I saw this and I just, you know, like the heavens parted and angels sang. I was like, that is beautiful. It's just a cute little like wooden block decoration. It was $12, which, you know, you don't ever pay that, you know, 40% off of that. But how pretty it's this gorgeous death head moth and fortune telling and moon phases and it's like metallic shimmer you know like I feel like Diana it is kismet I feel like this has your name all over it so go to Michael's girl and get this and it's just a cute little decoration like I can just you know put wherever sorry though it is like glare like glare city because it's it's metallic um but I hopefully you can see you know what the design is it's like a hologram metallic it is so pretty so that came home with me okay now let's get to the stitchy haul because this is like the fun stuff um I went a little bit crazy on Etsy Okay, but here's why. Here's why. I have been burned a few times on Etsy where I see a pattern and I'm like, ooh, I like that. I'm not going to buy it right now. I'm going to put it in my favorites. And then it disappears. And usually this is because it's a Disney or Warner Brothers something. You know, it's Harry Potter, Star Wars, or like Disney, honestly. And you know, whatever it's copyrighted, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, I think they tell the sellers, like, you need to take that down. You can't sell that. And I don't, I'm not even talking about stuff that's like super rip off of something, but just like inspired by, you know, especially like Star Wars. Disney is like really, really, um, known for like, you know, going after people who are using like any kind of Star Wars inspired, whatever. So, there's been a few designs that I've missed out on because I didn't snatch them up when I saw them. And um, it happened again. <laughs> so I went a little crazy and started buying everything. But what happened is um, Andrea, Stitchy Book, Stitchy Book War, Worm, wor Words, Words are hard. Stitchy Bookworm on Instagram. And she also has a YouTube. I think she's only had a, like three videos maybe. Um, she's like my new BFF. Okay. I can't get into it cause I'm, I'll do a different video and talk about this, but, um, we decided to read a book together. I'm, I can't even remember why we were talking books and one thing led to another and we decided to do a read along just the two of us of a book, which was amazing. And it was so fun because we like just chatted all day long like girl did you read okay where are you at like in this book okay I stopped on page 250 oh my god it you know it was so fun to like actually read at the same pace as someone else and discuss like the book in real time I'll talk about it in another video because I'm going to do a video soon um about literature books stitchy stuff so um, 
where I'm going with that is that she is stitching a Harry Potter piece that she got from Etsy. And um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's like um, the, you know, the cupboard under the stairs or something like that. And it's, um, it's Harry's like little closet that he lived in with his aunt and uncle. Um, and it's beautiful. It's, um, it's got like specialty stitches. And I can't even like describe it. It's gorgeous. If you want to see it, go to her Instagram stitchy bookworm and you can see it and I had saved it and you know almost bought it but didn't buy it whatever you know was gonna buy it someday and then she started stitching or she's been stitching it but she started posting updates again and I was like yeah okay I need I actually need that now like I need to go get it and I need I need to stitch that it's gone it's not there anymore so that sucks um and then it just reminded me of all the times that like things have been pulled out from under me from Etsy. So I was like, you know what, here's what needs to happen. When I see, especially like a fandom inspired piece like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Disney, whatever. When I see something like that and I love it and it's not like an outrageous amount of money, which they usually aren't, they're usually four or five bucks. I just need to buy it. I just need to buy it so it doesn't like disappear from, you know, for, from ever being able to buy it. So I bought a lot of patterns off of Etsy. Like a lot. So, um, what did I buy? Let's just, let's just take a look see. Oh, also because I've been super, I mean, okay, I've always been super into reading. Like, this is not new. I i am an avid reader. Last year I read, I want to say last year I read 60 books or close to it because I've, I've tracked them on Goodreads. And this year I'm already like there, like I'm at 54 or something like that. So I'm going to read more this year. So like, I'm a big reader already but I've like had this reignition of my reading passion and um so I wanted to buy some like literature booky inspired patterns so um I did and I'm also super into like the Russian Ukraine style of cross stitching which is I've showed before like some of the stuff I've stitched but it's that um it's almost like it's a watercolor and then um, the back stitching like brings it to life and makes it look kind of realistic but also still cartoony and just like a really I love that style it's very like delicate and romantic and I really like it um, so the first thing I bought is a pattern the seller it's in Cyrillic so I honestly I can't I think it's I think it was cute patterns by Maria. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Cute Patterns by Maria. And it's called Books and Coffee. It's kind of a big one though, but it like checks all my boxes. We got fall, we got coffee, we got books. And I think what I'm going to do just to make it like a little bit less stitching is I'm not going to stitch all this fill in here. I'm going to do like the books and the words and maybe do it on a really fun fabric but not do all that coverage in the background okay so about that and then um I got a Harry Potter these patterns are always like 30 pages like you're like really so that's what I'm doing now I'm just like I just have a stack like I have a stack of patterns here um, this one is called Diagon Alley and it's by who knows because <laughs> these people do not I it's cute patterns by Maria I think I don't know it's I think it is isn't that cool so cool 
Now, one thing about these, you do have to be careful. You have to watch the stitch count because some of these designers just take a picture and like put it through one of those like cross stitch generators and it's like 300 by 296 and it's just like you're doing a hade on accident. So I do always like double check the dimensions to make sure it's not anything outrageous. This one's pretty big, but it's not crazy. It's 166 by 155. And I just think it's very, very cool. In a month, it might not be there anymore. And then I got, oh, I got this one. It's called, I believe it's called, um, oh, it's called Battle of the Hearts. And it's inspired by Pride and Prejudice. So I had to have it. And the designer is not listed, you guys. Well, it's like, I shouldn't say that. Like the designer, like the name is here, but it's not like her shop name. It says designer Karina Carey, but that's not what it was called that I bought it from. So it's called Battle of Hearts. If anybody like has you know can't find these on Etsy and really wants them just like let me know and I'll like send you the link to where I bought it anyway this is Pride and Prejudice inspired and I love it isn't that pretty and she's reading a book mm-hmm perfect okay ooh this one's so pretty this one is, called Harry Potter. <laughs> it's called Harry Potter Book. Oh, this one is by Green Terrace, T-E-R-R-A-C-E. -E. They have really, really pretty patterns. I like that shop a lot. Um, not, a, and not even necessarily like Harry Potter stuff, just like beautiful, like autumn patterns and winter patterns. Anyway, this one is a Harry Potter inspired pattern. Isn't it cool? This one's a little bigger, but it's still not like, it's not like outrageous. It's, um, 134 by 176. Like it's pretty big. These actually go pretty fast for me because they're DMC. So you don't have to do each individual stitch and a lot of times you'll get like a little block of color and I don't know they don't they don't take me too long to do and then this one um whoo I did have I felt like I needed to snatch this one up because I did feel like this one might disappear um shop name not on here not on here. It's called Baby Daenerys. It's a Game of Thrones inspired pattern. But look how cute it is. There's her name on there, but like I said, that's not her shop name. Nadizja Davlinska. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. Um, I just thought this was so cute. I'm not into this purple swirly stuff though back here, so I don't think I'm gonna stitch that. Listen, I'm still salty about Game of Thrones a little bit, I'll be honest. Now isn't the time or place to discuss it. I, is it, would it be a spoiler at this point, like to even talk about it? Like, I mean, by now, like you should, you know, like are the, is the, is the spoiler, alert like has it been enough time I'll be I'll try to be vague um although Daenerys didn't have the ending that maybe a lot of us hoped for I'm still gonna be a fan I'm still a fan okay my thoughts about Game of Thrones because I said I wasn't gonna go into it because there was just too much to unpack but here's the thing. I know a lot of people were super disappointed in the finale. I actually loved the finale. I didn't love the season. I didn't love the shortcuts. I didn't love the, um, you know, the, the, the plot. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the thing, the things they made characters do to get them to point B 
instead of letting them like journey to that point in a way that made more sense. You know, some of the, the machinations that the, the showrunners put in place to get people in place and, you know, to wrap it all up tidy. Uh, not, not a fan, not a fan of a lot of that. Um, I did like the finale though. I did. I know a lot of people didn't, but I, I liked it a lot. Like a lot, a lot. So anyway, that's my thoughts about Game of Thrones. Um, I have given up hope on George R.R. R. Martin ever actually finishing the series. Um, I've been reading those books for a long time. I didn't start at the very, like when everybody else did, but I read those well before the HBO show. I think I jumped in, when I jumped in, he had t the first two written and I remember the third coming out. Um, so I've been reading them at least like that long. And I held out hope for a long time, <laughs> a long time. But now I'm like, you know what? He's just full of crap. I don't believe him. He's been telling us for like eight years that the book's almost done. Like, I, I don't believe anymore. And it's okay. It's okay. I've, I've made my peace with it. I've accepted it. Like, I think we might get one more book. I don't think we're getting the final book. I just don't. And I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that in the mean way that a lot of people are like, well, he's old and he's kind of fat. So, you know, he's not in good health. He's going to have a heart attack and die. Like, I think that is super, super rude. And that really annoys me. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying like, oh, he's going to kick the bucket before he can finish the series. I just truly don't believe he's going to do it. I just don't have any faith in him. <laughs> that was a tangent. Um, thanks for taking that little journey with me. Let's get back to cross stitch. I made an order from Threads and Twined because um, they were having a 30% off sale. So, you know, come on. Um, but I kind of like, I kind of restrained myself. I just got um, a big fat quarter of Picture This Plus Ren in 40 count because that'll, that'll come in handy at some point. And then I couldn't help myself to get another Hands Across the Sea. I got Amy Can 1831 because look at it. Ugh. It's so pretty. It doesn't even have a verse. It's just beautiful. I'm going to have to do it in DMC though because that floss list ain't no joke. And it's even longer than it looks because a lot of these next to it, it's like times two, times three. So, um, yeah. DMC. Oh, I have some really exciting news. Um, and, and this is haul too, but, um, so Nikki Furuto, the designer behind Nikki's Creations Primitives, um, is an, a designer that is based in Italy. She comes to Colorado once a year in the spring, I believe and does like a little what would you call it it's not a retreat it's like a one day it's a day long um class she does um she's really good friends with a lady who lives in the area um my and i could be wrong about this but my understanding is that um jennifer went to like a chatelaine retreat in europe and met nikki there and they became friends and they hit it off and they stayed in touch and so on and so forth. And now Nikki comes to visit and Jennifer organizes, um, like this awesome class that, you know, she does all the work and we just show up. So I went this year, it, it was in the spring and, um, it was, I, I never knew about it the years before and I wasn't really into stitching, um, too much the years before. So I wouldn't have known about it but I will definitely be back. Like I want to go to every class she does forever. Um, so Nikki like came here. She actually flew here from Italy. Um, it was, you know what it was? It was in March because she did the class and then she went to Nashville market. So, um, she was absolutely lovely. I was already a fan of her patterns 
and her linens and her finishing and that's why I actually like wanted to do the class because I was like oh my gosh I love this designer you know sometimes you hear about like some classes and maybe it's like someone who's like maybe not your style or whatever you know and you're like oh hmm. but I was like um I actually love what she does I am definitely going to that class and it was well worth it Nikki is absolutely lovely lovely lady she's very elegant she's like um she's like a ballerina like just that like graceful like style and she carries herself very gracefully um I think I don't know if she is a ballerina like in real life she might be um anyway she's so awesome and so um we've on Instagram been in touch a little bit as like I would post something and tag her in it or whatever and she um she came across my I don't think she realized I did floss tube and then she came across my floss tube and she was she was like oh my gosh like um can you can I send you some patterns if you'll show them on your on your channel and I was like um yes of course so um caveat I got these patterns for free however I would have bought most of them not gonna lie and one of them I started and finished already so um, that was Summer Scissors Sampler. So one thing I really like about Nikki's patterns is they're almost always just DMC. She doesn't use a lot of fancy floss, but I feel like you still get, I don't know how she does it, but like she's really good with color. Like you still get that like prim effect um, without having to use over dyed, which I think is really cool. And I'm a big fan of this series. Um, I bought the spring one at her class. <laughs> I bought the spring scissors. I haven't started it yet. Um, they stitch up really fast. They're not, that's the other nice thing. They're not too, too much. Um, so I have spring, I stitched summer. I will show you now. I made it into a little pillow. Isn't that cute? Um, I do want to go get some trim to put around. I don't, what I have at home isn't the right color. So I do need to go get some trim. Um, and it, when I do that, I'll show you guys. There's so many chickens on here. It's awesome. <laughs> so many chickens. <laughs> isn't that cute though? I finished it with the, um, velvet that was in the color and cotton Halloween box. I finished, I finished this with, with that too. I really, that's really a nice neutral blue. It really comes in handy. Um, so yeah, so I, I started this and stitched it really quickly. And is it not freaking adorable? How cute. Um, this is actually Nikki's fabric. It's 32 count. I can't remember what it's called. I want to say like, I don't, maybe old. I don't know. I don't want to say wrong. She sells it on her Etsy. She also sells this gingham um, check fabric on her Etsy. Now this pattern is not on her Etsy, um, but I think the spring one might be. So, um, but you can get this one from your local needlework store or one, two, three stitch has it. And then she also sent me this one, which you can get on her Etsy as a PDF download. Um, this is, monthly season part three I'm gonna they're really little so I'm gonna get in close so you can see them and she's released um you know obviously part one and part two which are the first six months of the year so this is July August and September and the, these would stitch up so fast I am going to do these. I'm just trying to figure out how. Like I'm thinking maybe just like a square 
they wouldn't be square, would it? But I'm thinking like a, you know, three, three, no, four, 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 like just a block layout. Um, but I haven't decided yet, so I don't know for sure yet. And then the last one she sent me, so cute. Didn't have time to get this done for like 4th of July, but I'm still thinking of stitching it like now anyway. Um, and it's called Liberty Girl. It's so, so cute. I love this series she does. Um, she has a whole bunch of these on her Etsy. She does different holidays. She does different seasons. There's like a Halloween girl and a spring girl and they're so cute. I love these. So I need, I need to get on that for sure. So, um, Nikki, thank you so much for sending me these patterns. I am so super happy and proud to be able to show them off to everybody. Um, and again, like you guys, you can get most of these from your local needlework store. Um, and then she does have some available for like a PDF download on her Etsy. Um, she also very frequently designs for um, Just Cross Stitch Magazine. Like she is in the Halloween issue, um, which I bought. Why don't I show you guys Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2019? She has a pattern in here. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like find it really quick. Uh, but it's really cute, actually. Um, ah, here it is. Sheepish pin cushion. Cute. And she's also in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine quite a bit as well. So um, you all are probably familiar with her work. Let me show you this one last time. And I will show you again when I put the trim around it. And I just stuffed it with polyfill, like cotton. Well, it's not cotton, it's polyester, but you know. Um, okay, what else do we have? Woo. I feel like we've been, I feel like we've been hauling for a bit here, guys. But I showed you a finish in the middle of all that. Um, I bought some pens on Etsy. Brio and Brandish is the seller. And um, I told you I'm like super into books again. So I just finished the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. Mass or Moss? I think it's Mass. And um, she's a little bit controversial. Some people like, I mean, many people love, love, love her, her work but a lot of people don't um so yeah a little controversial i loved the throne of glass series um the first i remember reading the first book and being like mm, i'm not sure like before i finished it i was like eh, it's fine it's okay like i don't know if i need to read seven of these like hmm and then um by the end i was like okay like i think i'll read the next one like i'm not like you know, like I'm not like super obsessed, but like, I, I think it's okay. I think I'll read the next one. And then like, they got so good. <laughs> I actually ended up really loving that series. So anyway, I bought a pen in commemoration of one of the characters. I don't know if you can read that. Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Fire Breathing Bitch Queen. If you've read the books, that makes sense. Well, I'm going to make it, a, it's a pen, but I'm going to make it into a needle minder. And then while I was there, I couldn't resist these buttons, which I'm also going to make into needle minders. Harry Potter and Star Wars themed. They were like three bucks. Had to do it. Speaking of Star Wars... I got this kit. <clears throat> now these popped up like a month ago. Someone was like, look what I found at Hobby Lobby. And I was like, you didn't find that at Hobby Lobby, whatever. <laughs> and the, the person was like, no, seriously, I found it at Hobby Lobby. And I was like, what? But 
Hobby Lobby, I think only has like two of them and there's several. So um, there's a website actually where you can get these and that's where I got mine from. And I'll be honest, I cannot remember what it's called right now, but if you Google Star Wars cross stitch, you'll find it. And they have, um, I started with this one. It was very reasonable. It's like 18 bucks and it's a kit. I mean, I'd probably swap out the Ada cause I've been burned with that. <sighs> But it was like 18 bucks. I think that's very fair. It's not Dimensions branded, but that is exactly what Dimensions floss cards look like in their kits. So I'm thinking Dimensions put this together for them. Oh yeah, it does say kind of little. It says Dimensions. Okay, so anyway, they have other designs. Um, I started with this one. I certainly would was very tempted by the other ones. <laughs> but we'll start with this one. What else do we have here, guys? Oh my gosh. Oh, so I think I'm gonna have to do a flip through of this book at some point. Um, not this video, cause I feel like it's probably getting really long and I've been blabbering for a while. I went, I was at Joann's and I was looking at the quilt books as I always do. And this book was randomly with all the quilt books. Fables and fairy tales to cross stitch. French charm for your stitch work. Never seen it before. It was with the quilting books at Joann's. The most beautiful cross stitches in here. Like, so pretty. I cannot even. Now... They are French themed fairy tales. So some of them, I, d I honestly just don't know. Like some of the French nursery rhymes, I'm like, I'm lost. Still beautiful, beautiful patterns. Um, but then some are ones you would know. So like this one is Beauty and the Beast. So we know, we know Beauty and the Beast, right? But it's that kind of like watercolor with backstitch look that I've been loving. This book is chock full, chock full of beautiful, beautiful stitched pieces. Like I said, some of them I'm like, I don't know what that is, <laughs> but some of them I did. So this one is um, Cinderella right there. Look how beautiful that is. Fairy Godmother. Sleeping Beauty. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff. So, um, and some of them are actually really funny too. So like I said, I think I'll do a flip through if anyone's interested um, because it's just beautiful, beautiful work. But um, my favorite section is the French um, songs, French nursery rhymes, because I don't know any of them and it just makes me laugh because some of them are... Um, like this one is my favorite. It's a French nursery rhyme called, do you know how to plant cabbages? What? What? I might need to like Google this nursery rhyme so I can hear it. Do you know how to plant cabbages? All right, so if you want to flip through, let me know. I'm sure I'm sure one of you at least is going to be like, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we're almost done with haul, I promise. So I've been going to thrift stores looking for books. And of course, I always look for cross-stitch stuff, but I never find it because I'm not lucky or whatever. You know, I never find the cross-stitch. Girl girls i i don't know where that came from because there there are guys watching um y'all y'all i finally found some cross stitch and i mean like real the real stuff the good stuff not you know the crap that we we always find you know the um the leisure arts leaflets from the 80s with the ducks like yes i find those every time i go i'm talking about like i found some real stuff so it was the hospice thrift store in Boulder. 
I cleaned them out, so, you know, don't go back. Don't go looking right now because you won't find anything. Um, first, I found by the sampler com company, Brenda Keys, I found Hannah Wells 1878, which is a red work sampler. Then I kept flipping and I found GGR Sweet Adeline 1873. Another red work sampler. And this one has some linen in it. Now it's 28 count, so oh, not, not my fave, not my fave. But it's really pretty linen. I think, I think maybe this person dyed it, like coffee dyed it themselves. It doesn't look to me, it doesn't really smell like anything. It doesn't look to me like um, like R&R &R or anything like that. Like, I think they coffee dyed it themselves and it's really nicely done. Very subtle, very nicely done. 28 count, not as excited about that, but I will use it. It's a really loose 28 too. Like it's, mm. the holes are huge, loose 28. And then I found Plum Street Samplers, count twice. Very nice. And then lastly, I found Jeanette Douglas Take Time to Stitch. I have a few of these. I have Take Time to Collect and Take Time to Quilt. They're really quite small. They call for a lot of specialty stitches though. They're only 64 by 64 stitch count, but specialty stitches. So how exciting is that, you guys? I finally found like the good stuff out in the wild at a thrift store. Woo. So the last, 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 last of the haul, I wanted to get the embellishment pack for this Jeanette Douglas. Um, she calls so these designs will call for like six or seven silks usually gloriana um or belsois you don't want to buy a whole skein of that at eight dollars each um when you're gonna use like one length out of it so um and then she usually has like some little charms on there too so she sells these like really nice little packs where you can you can get like the floss you need and the charms and the beads or whatever. So I went on one, two, three stitch and I ordered that. And I was like, I need something else with it. Like I don't want it to just come all by itself. Like look how little it is, you guys. Like this little thing, it'll get lost. It'll get lost in the mail. So I went to my wish list and then I went and looked at what was new and whatever. And you guys know I'm obsessed, obsessed with these Russian designers right now. <laughs> one, two, three stitch is selling this one. I don't know what she's called. Yes, I, I think it's this. Le Point de Croix. I don't think that was right, but I think I was close. But look at how cute. Is this not the cutest? I mean, I have a lot of Harry Potter cross stitch and I honestly think this is the cutest Harry Potter cross stitch I have ever seen. Look how cute it is. Look at Bellatrix. Lestrange and Snape. How cute. Like how cute. I think I'm gonna have to start this real soon. Like real soon. Okay, that's all my haul. <laughs> Are y'all tired? <laughs> Let me show you some stitching. So, um, when I left you, I was working on Mirabilia Cathedral Woods Goddess and I did work on it a little bit more after my last video but I have I then put it down to work on other things and I haven't been back to it in a little while so here's what she looks like 
stunning. Absolutely beautiful. I'm stitching her on 28 count picture this plus gossamer, which is this beautiful like pale limey green with some yellow. And here's where I'm at. I think I was like here up done last time. So I've done like all of this down here. And I don't know how well it calls for three colors of Krynik and it's so sparkly. I hope some of that sparkle is showing up for y'all. She's so sparkly and pretty and beautiful. Then I've been working on my Hello Pumpkin Sal by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, the fourth part is going to be released next week. I finally got part one done and started on part two. So I'm like super behind, but I only stitch on this um, for like 30 minutes at lunch at work. And so, oh, so I am behind. Um, I am behind on it, but you know, whatever. It's not that it's that much stitching. I mean, it's a, it's not a, a, a total like tiny amount of stitching, but like I just don't get to work on it very much. And I think if I could like devote a few days to it, I could totally catch up. Um, but it's so cute. So part one is done and I started part two, which is this owl right here. And then part three is a little fox over here. The colors are just gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm doing this on a 32 count Dames of the Needle Little Bo Peeps Sheep. And I think it's really making those colors pop even more. A lot of people are just doing this on like white Ada, you know, something kind of just a cream. Um, when I was trying to pick out fabric, I was like, I kind of grabbed this one and I was like, hmm. And I was like, went and looked at the hashtags and saw what everybody else was doing and nobody was doing something quite this dark. And I was like, oh, it's like, I think it'll work. I really do. I'm going to give it a whirl and we'll see. And I do think it works fabulously. It's beautiful. So that's my lunchtime stitching. And then, um, you know, I did my video about samplers and I was like, this one is just really calling to me. I really want to start it. Um, but I said that about a few of them. And then Michelle Bindi Stitchy was like, oh my God that is amazing let's sell it and I was like okay let's do it and then I like kitted it up that night and started it and she was like like a, I don't know like a few days later I was like hey look and she was like I didn't even start mine yet <laughs> I was like I couldn't wait <laughs> so it's by Barbara Anna it's the Sadie Wood sampler and it was from Primitive Needle and Punch Stitcher magazine and it was the summer 2016 issue, which you can get as a PDF on their website if you want this pattern. Um, so it's not too much stitching. Like you can see it's like just little motifs spread out, but it is long. It's a long piece. And so I was trying to find, I was like so excited. I wanted to start it, but I didn't really have any fabric that was like the right I found fabric that would be perfect in color and whatever, but it wasn't the right size. And I was like, oh, I got to start this. I got to do something. And then, you know, I have some like 28 count and I don't like 28 count most of the time. It's not my jam. And I was like, well, what if I do one over one on 28 count? Like that'll use up some of this 28 count, but I'll still get to do like the little stitches that I like. So that's what I did. And this is a piece, this is a mystery linen. I really don't know what it is. I got it at the craft box. Um, it's 28 count and it's gonna probably not gonna show up on camera, but it's um, this greeny beige linen. I think that actually isn't showing up too bad. It's definitely got like a green tone to it. And then it has this um, like orangey modeling in it, which might be showing up. So I started this one over one on 28 count. So it's going to be super tiny. That's the, that's half of it. 
that's half of it. So it's only going to be like that tall. It's going to be like long and skinny. So this fabric's a little hard to do one over one because it's like a loose weave and it, so like the threads will, will actually like slip under and out if I pull too tight. So I've had some trouble like just trying to figure out my tension. It's fine. It's not a big deal. I do feel like doing one over one tends to get a little sloppy for me. Like when I'm doing my Mirabilia one over one on the skin, it, like the stitches don't look quite as good to me. Um, I don't know if everybody struggles with that with one over one or if it's just me, but um, I like it. I love it actually. <laughs> And if I would just dedicate a few more days, I think I could get done. But, um, you know, squirrels, I got distracted, wanted to do something else. Oh, I forgot to say, the pattern calls for DMC. I think it calls for like six colors of DMC. I actually um, am doing mine in fancy flosses. I just went in my stash and grabbed, you know, gentle arts and classic color works that were like approximate um, matches for the DMC. Okay, but then I got distracted. Um, my last Etsy pattern purchase, um, that became a start. So this is Little Room in the Attic on Etsy, and this is called The Girl Scissors and Sewing Machine. And it's very cute. And she has a series. She has this one, and then she has a little red-headed girl um, holding an embroidery hoop, and then she's a little blonde girl on a pile of fabric, fabric stash. And I couldn't decide between this one and the girl with the embroidery hoop, so I bought both of them. And then I realized I want to make this girl a redhead, and I realized, like, these are the exact same dimensions, like, from the, the head up. So I'm stitching this one, but with this one's hair. And I'm gonna keep her bow pink. And then I am going to stitch this one exactly as is with the red hair and the blue bow. Now the nice thing about these is they're not very big. Um, this one is 73 by 102 stitches. I've been stitching on it for three days only and I am like actually almost done. So I haven't done any of the back stitching, but I mean, it's just flying through. Um, so this will look so much better when I do the back stitching. Obviously you could probably tell this is where the page breaks. <laughs> so the next page only has like just a little bit right there. And then I just have to finish out the sewing machine down here and I'm done. So not a whole lot left on there. And then all the back stitching, of course. Coming out so cute. This is on a 36 count x Designs linen. I think it's called Antique Violet. I will say it sure does not feel like a 36 count. It feels like a 32. Don't ask me why. Most hand dyed linens tend to shrink up and be smaller. This one's big. This is not 36 count. It's, it's, it's a 32. I mean, it's stitching like a 32 count. I'm doing two strands of DMC and it's not crowded at all. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Cause I was a little worried. 36 count. I get nervous, like one strand, two strands. This has some blends. So I knew I had to do two strands. I was worried like my stitches were going to get really crowded and sloppy, but they're actually, it's worked out perfectly. So I don't think I'm going to put this away until it's done because I think like three, maybe four days and I'm done. So I'm, I'm going to stitch it until she's done. So next video, I hope I'll be showing you a finish. Um, okay. I think that's everything. I think that's enough, right? This is a long video because I had so much haul and because I went way too long in between videos, but, um, hopefully like next time will be a little more succinct. Um, I did 
want to just mention again, I do plan to do like a special edition video where I talk more about books, but still cross stitch. Um, I do want to get into bookie stuff, which I did this time inadvertently. But I also want to show you guys like all of my patterns that are like literary themed. Um, not just the ones I just showed you that I bought, but even some other ones that I've had all along. And I think it'll be um, a really cool video for anyone who's into books. So um, hopefully I'll be able to record that soon and get that up for you guys. So um, hopefully I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.